That kid's wild though. The 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 guy I just versed, his kid is wild. Going up to him, like he does half my health with his with his um hit. And then like if he hit, if he lands a curse of pain, that does like one third of my health. That shit is actually just like that's painful. God damn. Hey okay, we got a bard here. Oh. Running. Let's take a potion. Um, honestly, this is a bad spot. I need to kite towards the door. Yep, silence. Yes, sir. BOC. Holy shit. <laughs> How did that one not hit? Oh, we got. <laughs> Okay, I thought he was going to commit. I just got the lowest still. Got to take him out first. <laughs> Damn, bro, I cannot hit this guy. There we go. Oh my gosh. Holy dude. Wait a second. That was Yami. That was Yami. The boy Yami. Let's go. I feel like this guy is kidded. I didn't reload. That's sad. Hello! What is that damage? Uh, I didn't even get BOC. That was just a regular function hit to my head. Oh my god, it's half my health. Bro, what is that? How low is he? I don't even think I've had him half health, to be honest. God damn. Hey, what is up, guys? Luminous Zeal here. In today's video, we got a new build guide. After they took away the Chris Dagger from the Warlock, and I can no longer use Chris Dagger Demon Form, I had to cook up something new. This build might just dismantle the movement speed meta. I've been having so much fun and success with this build. It's a tanky but high damage spellcaster. This build is centered around having a lot of health, physical damage reduction, and magic resist with anti-magic. As you can see, the move speed definitely struggles, but we are putting everything in to all our other stats, so forget what you know about the movement speed meta and give this build a try. Alright, and just like you saw with that clip with Yami, we can miss 90% of our curses and still come out with the dub. Honestly, super cool to run into Yami. He's a great streamer and obviously just one of the best players in the game. If you don't know about him, you should definitely check him out on Twitch. I'm running Shadow Touch, Dark Reflection, Demon Armor, and Anti-Magic with Blow of Corruption and Spell Memory. The only perk that I think about switching out is Shadow Touch for Soul Collector. That way, our Dark Reflection and our Meme Beam hit a lot harder. However, gaining health back and doing more damage with melee swings is pretty nice, especially health goes a long way with more PDR. For the spells, I switched them up a little bit throughout the video, but what I landed on is Curse of Pain, Blood Sand Blade, Ray of Darkness, and Eldritch Shield. Honestly, I don't really use the Bolt of Darkness. It's more for long range. So if you want to switch this one out, you can definitely do so. Basically, when you get into a fight, you're going to buff yourself with Blood Sand Blade, land one Curse of Pain, and then the Meme Beam is going to become the Dream Beam, baby. And if you're up against another caster, you just pop Elder Shield. All right, now this build is going to take some trial and error. It's definitely different from what I'm used to with a high movement speed, and I don't usually cast spells. You're going to see me in these clips like the last one, missing a ton of spells, but this build is so strong that it doesn't even matter. We just demolish anybody we come across. So I think once I get more comfortable with this build, it's going to be even better. Alright, so the counters for this class are the Wizard, because they can out-DPS trade you in the mid-range. Plus they're just faster and they can sling out spells super quick. 
The other counter that I found was Ranger, Longbow Ranger staying at range, where you don't really have any way to get to them, and they can just run away and kite you. That is, until they get you super low, and then they push you, and then you're dead. And the other major con to this build, which you could probably guess, is the movement speed. Now, if somebody doesn't want to fight you, then there's just no chance you're catching up to them. Luckily for us, though, Gobby Caves is just a PvP map, so 9 times out of 10, whoever you see, they're just gonna rush you, try to kill you, and we can take that to our advantage. Alright, just real quick, I noticed that only 9% of you guys that are watching are subscribed, so if you like this video, please consider subscribing. All right, so one great thing about this build is because movement speed is king right now, all of these slow pieces are really cheap, so you can get a really decent kit for pretty cheap. I'm going to leave timestamps below if you want to skip to the PvP, but I'm going to go over the gearing process. All right, so the overview of the gearing process, the first thing that we're prioritizing is true and additional magic, then max health and armor, and then dexterity and knowledge. So for the first piece, the Gebedrumamaru, or however the hell you say this, you want to find one with true magic damage and then other decent stats. Now these are super cheap. Like look at all these with true magic. Then you got spell casting speed, armor pen. Like that's triple on roll basically. Fist power, armor pen, really good. True magic, bufferation, that's not great, but you get the idea. You can find some really good pieces for cheap. All right, next up we got the Crusader armor. Honestly, these can be a little bit more expensive if you're going for max health and armor rating. But you can look up like max health, physical damage reduction, or even vigor, and there you go. See, a little bit cheaper arm rating and physical damage reduction for 555. All right, for the hands, I like to run the heavy gauntlets for that vigor and dexterity. And because most people like to run light gauntlets, these are pretty cheap, and I filter by additional armor rating. Next up, I'm picking the plate pants because they give so much armor rating, and they give strength and vigor. Now, these can get pretty pricey. I like to search up max health and knowledge to make it a little bit less pricey. Otherwise, if you have more gold, you can run, like, max health armor. But you can see if you're running a rare, like, 5 max health, 1 knowledge, Six max health, one knowledge. Like, these are all super, super cheap. All right, next up, we got the plate boots. One man's trash is another man's treasure, and most people think that these are just trash, that so they're really cheap. But again, you can find some really good plate boots. You get a lot of armor, five strength for an epic. And look at these. Five additional armor rating, two magic power, one agi for 154. All right, next up for the falchion, I would invest in a really good falchion, something with 43 base damage, and then three max health and some other good rolls if you can afford them. Like this one's actually really good, three max health and max health bonus for only 210 gold. All right, and now for the secondary, I run the crystal ball and I'll kind of explain why, but I run it with max health. I mean, all the health that you can get for this build is gonna go an extra mile because of all of the PDR that we have. Now you could run a heater shield if you wanna have even more armor rating, but I'll tell you why I settled on the crystal ball. When we have the crystal ball in our hand instead of the spell book, we're a threat at both melee and ranged at the same time. We can zap curses, Plus, if they push into us, we pop BOC, and we can hit them with the Falchion hit. Plus, when you have the Crystal Ball out, that 6 magic damage is on the Crystal Ball is going to add towards our Dark Reflect and our Blow of Corruption, plus any spells that are on them when we have the Falchion out. So basically, we're triple dipping into the damage when we run the Crystal Ball instead of the Heater Shield. Alright, for the Cloak, I like to run the Mercurial Cloak because I like to have around 10% action speed. For the Necklace, I'm either running the Necklace of Peace with Armor Rating and True Magic, or a Phoenix Choker like this with armor and physical damage reduction, or you can get uh, something like Max Health if you have the money for it. All right, and then for the rings, I like to get Ring of Finesse. They're pretty cheap with the true magic damage, and again, I just like to have a little bit more action speed. I'll look for ones with either armor rating, physical damage reduction, or Max Health. Lastly, if you have the Nightmare Skeleton skin, I would run this for the extra armor rating. I personally like the extra PDR, but if you like the magic resist, go with that too. Hope you guys enjoy the build, and let's get into the PvP. Holy shit. Actually, you got some... Oh, true fizz rings too. Okay. Got some decent stuff here, man. There goes the Rondel fighter. Oh, dude, this guy's... Hell juiced. Oh my gosh. He actually is good juice totally. Somebody else here too now. Huh? 
There it is. Hey, I'm low now. Can you let me heal? I gotta heal though. Oh, it doesn't matter. But two people against me, three people against me. Oh, boys, he's juiced. He's juiced. Yes, sir. What <laughs> moves be better, boys? What moves be better? Brother. <clears throat> well, I missed everything. I missed everything. I'm so fucking trash. Oh, we killed each other? To dream beam, baby, let's go. Juiced. Brother, holy, 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 this man's geared. What in the hell? Wait, Grimmy's around now? I didn't even know that. Grimmy's on uh See you later, brother. Get off me, boy. 
Oh my gosh, this man was geared too. Okay. Oh, is he? Oh, he's one shot. Damn, true feet scrappy stuff. No, dude. Back's held, bro. This guy was absolutely biss. That's right, Rod Boy. You can't handle this. Bam, bam, the dream, bam, baby, let's go. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.